Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing rainbow scallop. Ah! This is the first project out of our January The Wonderful World of Color box. Mm -hmm. And we have Keenan here working the cameras. Hello. And I'm super excited about this project because usually the first project of the box, I try and make it fun. Yeah. Like this is no stress. This is reaching back to play. This is taking the time to explore we're, we're, the expectations we have, we're just, we're just gonna lower those a little bit. Bring them down, expectations, just, we can't care about those. Because when you create with this expectation of reward or an end result, then it's kind of like we're creating out of fear. And then we become so afraid that if we don't meet that expectation, where if we mess up, we get mad. Or, you know, we don't, we don't connect to the reward of creating which is just doing something which is just making so i love to focus on projects that are really just about that aspect let's go back to um like when we were younger and we just made stuff because it was fun to make stuff that was no it. fear no fear yep no fear okay so super colorful way excited and uh we're using three colors for this project our first color is lemon yellow. Our second color is fuchsia. And our third color is Tahoe blue. And this is our in-house paint brand. These are liquid watercolors. They're dye based. And the paint uh, company is Dandelion Paint Co. I have one brush. It's a round six. This is the LMA Classic Series brush. You can use whatever brush you have. You can use whatever colors you have. The fun thing about this project is like, you can do this in many different colorways. So pick your favorite colors, do it. That's it. Sweet. Um, I'm using the LMA watercolor paper. Please make sure that you paint on the rougher, more textured side. That's the paintable side that you want to paint on. And I cut my paper in half, taped it down. Ooh, means you have extra paper. Yes. Schmack. Yeah. You can play with the swatches. Yeah. And um, I use Holbein Soft Tape. It's my favorite tape because it needs, leaves a nice clean edge. And we are going to be doing this project in three steps. Just three. Our wow. first step is we're just going to sketch. Three colors and three steps. Three colors, three steps. Making it easy. Um, second step is we are going to paint our rainbows. Hmm. I, <laughs> I just know. did that for the entire step. That's the whole <laughs> painting. Paint the rainbows. Paint the painting is your second step. <laughs> 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 Step three is just repeat rainbows all the way across your paper. That's it. Wow. I know. We're starting from the bottom. Yes, we are. I'm, I'm curious. Okay. So, before we get to painting, we need to do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. I love starting that way. It's a great way to realize that we're here just to explore and learn and grow and it's not a big deal. Sometimes it's hard to reach the bell. <laughs> you did a good job. I should have stood. You should have. I should have used my legs. Yeah. It's a good idea. Okay, so before we get started, I have my three colors here on my palette. I'm going to put them on the side for a little bit. So essentially, these are our primary colors. The, with these colors, we can mix a whole bunch of other colors. So I felt like this would be a great project for us to play around with color mixing. And you guys can get used to um, how much color you put of this and how that informs this, all of that stuff. So I separated out into three piles. And then you can do smaller piles from here. Now with this butcher tray, the middle of it um, is curved, which means that you're gonna wanna keep your paint along the edges. If you pour all your paint in the middle, it's gonna slide off to the edge. So I like to keep my color mixing on the edge in that crevice. And then when I mix colors, I pull them to the center. So if I'm mixing purple, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this blue, a little bit of this fuchsia. Now I have that really pretty purple. And then depending on how much you pull, you can get different hues of that same color. So if I want a more pink purple, like more of a magenta, mm. I'm gonna grab that. And I just do it right next to the side, connect it. Okay. 
And then on the other side, I can take more blue, and now I have a more blue purple. So now I have three different purples right here. Boom, boom, boom. And you can pull from those at any time. And we're gonna do the same thing with our yellow and our fuchsia. Make sure you don't get blue in it there because when you mix all three, you're gonna get mud. So I'm gonna take some fuchsia, some yellow. I think there's a dessert called mud. Mud pie? Mud pie, but there's also one that's literally just mud. Uh, you need to talk more about okay. that. Okay. Chocolate pudding. Okay. Oreos. Okay. Gummy worms. That's dirt and worms. That is mud. No! You call it dirt and worms. <laughs> you can't be so specific. It's like dirt and worms. Because there's gummy worms in it. You say, you say mud. <laughs> Can I, let me have some of that mud. Yeah, give me some of <laughs> under the bowl of the mud. Do you want worms in it? You're going to be like, yeah, I yes. said mud. You can't just, you can't, mud is, you know, <laughs> you know what mud is. It's like unspoken ingredients in brownies. Mud. Mud. Okay, so you can see here that I've been mixing a few different colors between this fuchsia and the yellow. I have kind of a golden yellow here. I have an orange color, and then I have actually more of a red. And that's kind of like the magical thing with these colors is yellow and magenta, you can mix red out of it, which is crazy to me because red is a primary color. You can't mix red. You can. I just did it. <laughs> this okay. is blasphemous. Now, um, I'm gonna pour another yellow pile because I kind of diluted my yellow with orange, so I'm just gonna have a clean yellow. Now, one more thing that I'm gonna show you before we get started is if you did get this box, The Wonderful World of Color, we have a bonus item there, and it's this metallic pigment powder um, from Jacquard, and it's a metallic pigment, which means, I put a little bit on my palette here, you can mix this with any of these watercolors and instantly turn that watercolor a metallic color. So if you wanted to do this entire thing with metallic paints, you can. What? Yeah, let me show you. Let me just show so you. So it'll glitter, it'll shine? Yes, in. so I'm gonna take some of this pigment powder. And then I'm gonna mix it with, let's just grab magenta. It looks so much thicker. Look at that. When you add, oh my goodness. And now I have this gorgeous gold pink Ooh. color. Here, I'm gonna do the side colors. cam, see if they can see it. Can they, oh, that's can you lovely. see that metallic? Yes. Anyways, this is the bonus item in this box. It's so fun. <laughs> It's what? a family show, Sarah. <laughs> it's very fun. Very, very, very fun. <laughs> and the cool thing about this pigment powder, too, is you don't have, it can work with any paints that you have. So if you have acrylic paints, you can mix it in with acry acrylic paints. If you like to do calligraphy and lettering, you can mix it with gum arabic, which is a binder, and make your own calligraphy ink. You can mix it with other inks that you have. Like, you can even... You I, can mix it in the things. You can mix it even in, like, clay. What? Yeah. You can mix it into anything. It is so cool. And if you guys are mixed media artists or do any of our art journaling tutorials like with Jesse, this would be an amazing thing to have with you because all the all the different materials that you're getting, this can work with it. Wow. And like for kids too. You can make oh, any yeah. of your kids love powder. Paints metallic. And it comes in different colors too. So like because this is a gold color, this is called solar gold, it gives a really warm tone to whatever color you mix it into which personally I'm a fan of, mm -hmm. but they have like white, they have silver, they even have colors of it too. So if you didn't want it to have a color effect on your paint colors and you just wanted to turn it metallic, you can do that also. That's cool. Anyways, so I'm gonna be doing some of the rainbows with this metallic paint. Is it hard to wash the metallic paint stuff off? No, you just rinse Pretty your brush. Pretty simple? Yeah. That's convenient. Just rinse your brush and it's gone. Okay, I was really excited to talk yeah. about this product with you guys because when I started playing with it, I was just like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, where have you been? I'm sorry, this is turning all of my paints metallic? <laughs> 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 all right, let's get started. So, 
Step one is we're gonna sketch, and basically I'm just gonna do scallops. So I'm going to start with doing, I, and I'm just kind of guessing how long they should be, and I'm gonna see how that goes. Okay, so that first, <laughs> that first one got really big, and then I had to get a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'm just gonna erase and start again. This is why we sketch. Okay. What if you use like a quarter? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I'm not gonna do that though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what that's if you use good. the inside of a roll of tape that you just finished? What if I use... The glitter the jar. The glitter jar. What if you just use the lid? Why, why would I take it off? Let me just keep suggesting things. Oh, what if okay, you okay, use okay. <laughs> the paint bottles that Let's you have? Let's see. Uh, paint bottles are too small. I mean, you can. That would be really small, I feel. Okay. Yeah, no, I get it. How do you check and make sure they're all the same height? That's what I want to know. You could put a ruler down. Or, like, mark it on the Yeah, you could mark thing. with a piece of tape. Or oh, my gosh. This fits, like... Perfectly. So not only is it magical, <laughs> it's very useful. Okay, wow. and then for the second layer, you're just going to start in the center of your little circles mm -hmm. and go from there. And this is like a, it's almost like a fish scale pattern. It kind of reminds me of mermaid scales when my daughter saw. Say that. Yeah, when my daughter saw this project, they were like, when they saw the outline, they're like, mermaids! And then it turned into rainbows. So there's many happy ways that you can take this project. Actually, I'm kind of tired of that. I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out beautifully. Yeah, it did. I just really struggle with like... It's a good base. It's a good starter. It's a good starter. And then from there, just go for it. Yeah. And remember, we're here to play. We're here to explore. We're here to try. So if you're scales are or rainbows whatever you want to call them get a little bit funky like mine are doing now i'm just going to keep going okay okay because this isn't a big deal this is just fun again gives you the opportunity to improve absolutely oh what are these scallops nope rainbow scales <laughs> that's right Look grab out. a star crunch, Look grab some wonky. paint, and get to practicing. It's so funny because I feel like if you look at the history of our boxes that come out in January, yeah. with the exception of last year, I go for lots of color in January because mm. I'm just, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to like play with vibrant color. You know, I painted the winter scenes. I did all the browns in November. Give me a rainbow. Get the year started with happily get, rainbow colors. Let's get bright. It's the new year. It's the new year. It's the <laughs> new painting. Uh, also, I just love painting with the ton of color. I think it's so fun. Okay, and the when you get to the top, it's not gonna like finish perfectly, right? Because it's like a pattern essentially. So we'll just keep going. Okay. And the other really wonderful thing about this is like even though we sketched it. You don't have to follow this at all. So like, if you look at the reference photo actually really close, you can see my original pencil marks and how off mm. it is. <laughs> it's a guideline. Like your painting informs code. you as you go, you know? Yeah. We're here to play, we're here to have fun. Let's do it. I got some colors mixed on my palette. And you can even start, like maybe you want the whole thing to be just rainbow. So we'll start with red. We'll get to some orange. If you want the whole thing to be just rainbow? Like every rainbow to be a whole rainbow. Oh, got it. You know what I mean? Yes. So you can do that. Oh, I need to mix green. That's easy. Yellow and blue. Blue and yellow. There we go. And then, like, let's say you're just like, okay, cool, rainbow. Let's play with other colors where maybe I want this to be more analogous colors. Do you know what analogous uh, colors are, Keenan? You don't have to make words up to sound smart, Sarah. <laughs> I do, though. 
<laughs> no, analogous colors are when colors are next to each other on the color wheel. Oh. So you can do essentially an ombre, right, of color within the rainbow. So we can go from blue to purple to pink. I like that. So like kind of play with it, play, switch up. Do you want to do warm colors or do you want to do cool colors? Do you want to do analogous colors or do you want to just go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple? I switched it up a lot in here because I wanted to play with all of the different ones. But like, let's say you're doing this, um, you're making a card or whatever you want and you're doing it for someone and their favorite colors are like Kanan, his favorite color is sunset orange. Mm -hmm. I would focus on yellows and oranges and reds. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can, you can like customize nice it to the color. color palette you want. I like so that. have fun with it. Sarah, Yeah. when you lived in the magical land of California, yeah. what were some favorite January activities you guys did? January yeah. activities? Asking specifically for the month of January, if you have memories <laughs> for that. I don't. No memories of January? No memories of January. It rained a lot. Oh, really? So I would say probably a lot of reading. Mm. I love to read. I was most likely eating cookies. What are you going for here, Keenan? Nothing. I'm genuinely. <laughs> I just thought of this question right now. I'm like, I'm, do, I'm answering it wrong. Like, what's the what's whatever the it is, I'm wrong. wrong. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, and I want you guys to know that, like, as I'm painting, I'm also paying attention to the. Um, how do I say this? The pacing of the color and the location. So I started with the warm and then here are two cools. Mm. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, let's put a warm back in there. So then it's not like overtakes. Cool. And like, that's what I do the whole time is I pay attention to, okay, where's the warm? Where's the cool? Is there a mixture? If I don't know what to put, maybe I'll do a mix, you know? And like, this is a great way to practice how color placement and warm and cool colors interact with each other within a composition. Sometimes you can do, and I don't know, sometimes I get questions about like, is it okay if I only use this? Like, should I stay within this color composition or this color composition? And I struggle with how to answer that because really I feel like color is one of those things where you can really let your style shine. Style is what comes out of you naturally. You don't even have to have any education in art to have a style. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just your artistic instincts and it's based off personal preference. It's based off of your experience. It's based off of what, what you wanna create, what you want the viewer to feel, like all of those things. So if you have a style where your personal preference is you lean towards cool colors, then paint in cool colors. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you like having a mix, have a mix. Like, I feel like when it comes to the colors that you choose within a painting, I don't know, I, I want you to feel like if there's any place that you can have freedom, it's that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's not wrong. I like that. I like it especially because my style has changed over the years. Like in the 90s, I had a lot of bowl cuts. Yeah. You know, now, <laughs> not so much. Well, and actually the really funny thing about style, and um, like I was researching Matisse, hint, hint, for some upcoming projects. And if you look at the history of um, like a famous artist, their style changes drastically, drastically over time. And that's because art is essentially trying to figure out, is a continuation. How can I do this? How can I do this? What can I learn from this? What if I did this? What if I added this? I feel like it's about getting different results to improve, to play, to explore. And when you think about style, sometimes I think we're afraid that we will box ourselves in. 
like once you figure out a style, is it okay to expand past that? And the answer is absolutely yes. Your own style is going to change drastically over your time. And instead of being nervous about that, embrace it. Uh, know that it's gonna happen, appreciate it. Follow your curiosity. See where it takes you, see where it leads you. Hmm. I like that. Like talking about Matisse, or maybe a better example is uh, Picasso. Mm -hmm. I went to, when I was in Spain, I went to a Picasso museum. I mean like, and he's known for cub cubism, right? Um, the faces, you, you know, very mm. geometric. Cubism? Uh-huh. It's called cubism? Yeah. That's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Why? Um, I don't Sorry. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Cubism, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, so, so <laughs> sometimes when we, when we see art, we could be like, well, that doesn't even look real. Like, how is that even anything? You know what I mean? Yes. Um, but if you look at his history of his artistic ability, I mean, when he was younger, like 11, his technical ability was insane what he can recreate in a painting and the paintings that he was doing and all these things. And I, f I always, I feel like when you're learning something, like the first steps is to learn how to do something, the rules. This is why we use these different colors. This is value. This is color mixing. This is, um, atmospheric perspective. Here are the rules of composition. We, you learn the rules so you can create what you want to create and then you spend the rest of your life trying to figure out how to break those rules so you can make what it is that you want to make. And it's really like this freeing thing of being like, yeah, I know a nose doesn't go there. I w I'm trying to communicate this, you know, like it's really, I don't know, it's really fun. All of that is to say, I think we started talking about this because of color. We did, color and then style. All of that is to say, trust your, use this exercise to trust yourself with the color choices that you make. The worst thing that's gonna happen is it's not gonna turn out and you throw it in the trash. The best thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna find some color combinations that you really like. So listen to yourself, trust yourself, try it, don't feel, you. Don't feel like you're stuck in something just because you've been doing it a long time. Don't feel like you have to do it this way. Like, please don't follow the exact color. I'm not telling you the colors that I'm using because I'm just going, because I want you to just go. And when you're done, as you're creating, you're gonna notice what ones you're leaning towards, right? Like, I really love this guy right here. That bluish? Yeah, the blue to the pink. Do you have a favorite so far, Keenan? Not yet. Actually, the one I love the most is the one that bled into itself. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I like how that looks. Now, if you like the bleeding, you can let the lines touch each other. If you don't like the bleeding, all you have to do is just make sure you give them space. I wonder if it's almost time for a metallic color. You wonder? I wonder. Do you think it's time? Oh, yeah. It's definitely time. We're so excited to see that. And then you can just do like a little circle in the middle if you want. Okay, let's try some of that. And it just brings right back up. So this was dried from when I showed you guys. And I can just bring it right back up. Let's grab some yellow, some metallic. Ooh, that just makes it such a pretty gold. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it makes it seem more full. Yeah. So you can even do this whole thing in metallics if you want. Let's grab a little bit of green. Mm. And if you have black watercolor paper. Oh, 
That would look so good. The metallics would show up beautifully on black watercolor paper. Whoa. Can you mix it with bleed proof white? I mean, I don't see why not. Okay. It does, I think bleed proof white on the actual jar says like, not for mixing. Oh. I, I do it anyway though. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I can break the rules. Yeah, stop it, you little container. <laughs> I like to live on the edge. Yeah. So when a jar is like, don't do this, I'm like, I'm going to do exactly oh, okay. that. <laughs> Give me the cap that you can't control. <laughs> So uh, I would think so, but like, don't, I don't, I don't know. I kind of like to break the rules. So that's yeah. why I'm saying go for it. Mm -hmm. This could be a really great way actually to get to know your color palette also. Ooh. You know? Like, Ooh. do you remember one of the projects we did a color mixing project where we just did like an actual color chart? Yes. Like. Which I liked. Yeah. But you could do that this way. I was just thinking this would be a really cool one to do from top to bottom or bottom to top, whichever. But you could do the whole page is the rainbow color, not individual rainbows. <gasps> oh, like red, yellow. Yeah. yeah. We kind of do something like that on our raindrops. Yes. Ooh, that is a pretty one too. Mm. I think I need a warm color here because I got two cools right there. Mm. And then a cool here because I got two warms. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You got to start splitting them up. Yeah. You can also use like, you can use any size paintbrush for this. Even a round 12 would probably work. You just have to have a light touch. You can use your round two. I just don't want you guys like to s not try painting because you don't have the round six. You only have a round eight, you know? Just try it. Just try it. Don't let that get in your way. Okay, let's do, I love a good turquoise color. Turquoise, when I was a child, was my favorite color. Yeah? Yeah. Turquoise next to, and this is why color theory is super interesting too, um, but complementary colors, colors that are essentially across from each other on the color wheel, um, they look really good next to each other. They make the other one pop. So like a turquoise next to like an orange or a yellow, oh. So good. Beautiful. And to take it a step further, when you're choosing colors, you can think about the emotions that colors have. And this can be with, like there's a psychology to colors, you know, like that's why so many fast food places are red and yellow, or, you know, like um, earth green, you know. Interesting. And so you can look at the psychology of colors and play with that, or you can pull from your own experiences of color and be like, when I think of happy, do I think of warm or do I think of blue? When I think of calm, what colors do I think of? And that's informed from a society and from your own experiences. And so like as you're playing with these colors, as you're mixing, you're gonna see what you're drawn to. And then I want you to think about the feelings that you have associated with those colors because that's information that you can take. And when you create a painting and you say, man, I, I really wanna paint something and people look at it, they feel at peace. So then you think, okay, well, what colors make them feel that? Take, pay attention to that and use those colors in your painting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, That's awesome. We're gonna be here forever, Keenan. I've been talking and we're like, a third done. One third. <laughs> Do 
I noticed that you didn't ask me what my favorite January pastimes were. <laughs> so I thought I could answer those for you. <laughs> um, uh, Kenan. Yeah. Um, is there an activity that you love to do in January? Uh, I'm glad you asked. No, there is not. <laughs> Uh, I just, you know, so I, I think of Missouri in January and it's yeah, always cold it and frozen. Is. It is. So sledding, maybe. Okay. But it usually gets to, you know, negative numbers. But thanks for <laughs> Is there an activity you like to do? No. Ugh. <laughs> uh. You know what's crazy right now is we're almost mid-December. It's been 60 here in Missouri. Uh, it's unacceptable because <laughs> it's just a lie. <laughs> because in two weeks, it's going to be close to 11 degrees. Is it really? Who knows? Around Christmas time. Okay. It Like two years ago, it was negative 15 for two weeks. So, yeah, I mean, last year in January, it was negative 32. So we know that this is just a lie. I know. I'm like, California, am I back? <laughs> Is that where I yeah. am? Do I live here? I can go outside with a t-shirt? Not only my first winter, moving out here, there was a snowstorm in Missouri, which was my first experience with something like that. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> uh, but my first January, essentially the entire month of school was canceled due to snow days. And I'm like, what? Mm. How do you work? Like, how, how do you get anything how done? How do you get anything done? I got to... But yeah, really, that just prepped me for COVID, right? Oh, totally. Pre-COVID is actually what we call winter here. <laughs> it just gets you ready for quarantine. We're used to it. You're stuck in your house. <laughs> your kids can't go to school. You yeah. can't go to work. Remote learning. Just staying Activated, inside. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel like... I talked a lot about all the different things that we can do. Now I'm going to do a challenge. Oh. Ready? I have Star Crunch ready. Okay. Keenan, pick a time. Oh dear. Uh, what, 3 p.m. This oh, is why. Oh, oh, sorry. A length I like of time. 3 p.m. because. <laughs> Pick a length of time. Okay. Uh, you can't let me run with things like that. You got to be more You're right. specific. You know what? I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at hours. me. I'm mad at me. <laughs> uh, two minutes. Okay. I want you to set a timer. Okay. And I'm going to see how much I can do in two minutes. Okay. Let's, let me get a timer going. Okay. But the point of this, you guys, is hopefully you're not at this place with this creative challenge because... We want you to feel playful and not stress and all of this stuff. There's also a lot of value to forcing yourself to make decisions and paint quickly. Because when you have to look at colors, composition, the overall gesture, all of those things, and you have only a short time to respond to it, you will then learn how to identify things faster you will learn to trust yourself and your gut more. And so sometimes it's a good exercise to just paint as fast as you can and see where it takes you, okay? So Keenan, I set the timer for two minutes and three seconds and I'm going to start it and I will count down from three. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh, I just grabbed green. I don't want green again. Let's start purple here. So while I'm painting this, I'm thinking, okay, what is my next color section going to be? I'm going to do a full rainbow here because it's between warm and cool. So like just get gathering information and looking at it quickly and then moving on, making this decision and sticking with it. 
my breast strokes aren't perfect, they're bleeding into each other, that's okay, I'm still gonna go. Let's do blue over here, blue, blue. And then also what you can do too, as you're kind of watching and learning from this, is you can pay attention to the tendencies that you have. Do you tend to grab for green first? Do you tend to grab for blue? What, what colors, when you're working quickly, do you go for always? You know, that kind of stuff. And it can give you some information about where you're at. Um. 30 seconds. 30 seconds left? Yep. <laughs> 10. <laughs> 5. Done? Done. Okay. Wow. Okay. What do you think? I feel like I got some interesting colors here. Look at this orange that bled into the blue and the purple. Hmm. At first when it happened, I was kind of mad because I'm like, oh no, I'm not getting clear colors. But this section right here is really cool. <laughs> Not bad. At, ooh, look at when that blue, look at that blue into that red. I actually like how the blue and the orange <gasps> yeah, yeah. combo right there. That's yeah, what next I like. to each other. What do you, what'd you feel about going fast, Keenan? I felt an unnecessary amount of anxiety <laughs> <laughs> just coming from my soul. I don't know how That's or fair. why. That's fair. I wasn't even painting, but I, I, I also forgot about the timer. <laughs> At the same time, I was so concentrated on what what's Sarah gonna do with <laughs> that one bled weird. What's she gonna? What? And it was unnecessary, but it was good. It was good. I, I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Sometimes it's just pushing yourself. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. So I just noticed that I put a color that's right next to a color that's already there. So I'm just gonna switch it. I'm gonna do a layer over it and change the color. And also at this point, my palette kind of turned into a mess. Look at this. Oh dear. <laughs> you might need new piles by now if you're like me and you just kind of blend it all. You can also do um, like rainbows that are just the primaries. You know what I mean? Like magenta, yellow, blue. That's it, you know, like I actually thought it would be really cool when I was coming up with this project, like what I wanted to do also was almost like a vintage rainbow pattern, like 70s and just have like long skinny rainbows all around the paper. Does uh, that make sense? No, but I believe in you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but then I thought like this this could be a really great opportunity to talk about color, yeah. palettes, style, that kind of thing. But like, I'm gonna do a metallic color again. These are secretly just multicolored targets waiting in line. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a choir. Or do you know what you could do too? Like I did that bottle and cut it in half to paint, but like these can be as big or as small as you want. You can just turn these into scales and then, do you know what you could do? You can take this metallic and do designs on the rainbows. Ooh, like after they dry? Yeah. Like let's say I grab some of this gold here. And do <gasps> dots. Yes. You know? Yes. Or maybe this one is lines. Oh, 
oh, this just opened up so many things. That changes so much stuff. You can do Morse code. You can... Line, dash, dash, line, line, dash. You can even, like, letter on top of this. Like, let's say I did this whole thing in, like, a turquoisey blue color and then took the gold and lettered something. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, that wasn't as exciting. <laughs> I was thinking you could leave a space in the middle and do rainbows around the space and then oh. do a, a note or a thing. Yeah. I don't know. So many ideas. I just love it when you get something and your mind just like slingshots into mm -hmm. all of the different things that you can do with it and you can't wait. I kind of love the bleeding that happened right here too. I do too. I, any of the bleeding, I'm a big fan. You can see that in, in this reference photo, the first half, I was pretty liberal with them touching. And then I was just like, okay, I don't want them to like touch. So you can see kind of what that looks like when there's no bleeding and then bleeding here. And you guys can decide what you prefer. I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer. It's really just down to like, what do you like? It reminds me of the quote in that notebook. What do you want? <laughs> I love when people use that as a clip to deciding where to eat. <laughs> yeah. That's my yes, favorite. Me too. And it <laughs> describes me perfectly. <laughs> it's not that simple. What do you want? <laughs> I want it all. <laughs> I want both. What colors do we need? Do you see how like, if I were to do cool all in this section and warm all in this section, how it can create implied lines? Yes. So that's why I'm trying to like jump around, but you can even use that to your advantage. I see it because these four. Yeah, yep. They go at a, they, they hang out. They do, they pop. They pop. It's just a good, it's a good practice to pay attention to. These they colors. may not know what four I pointed at. Look at how sparkly oh I am. <laughs> You're <laughs> metallic. <laughs> You're the golden surfer. Uh, what is? Never mind. What? It's a character. It's a it's a character in. In Marvel? Do you like Marvel? <sighs> I do like Marvel. <laughs> I would have never guessed. You never talk about it. I, I know. I try to keep it to a minimum. <laughs> It's actually the silver surfer, but I called you the golden surfer. Oh, you were making a joke and I, I didn't get it. It wouldn't have got, that's why I said, never mind. Mm, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm so, I ruined that one. Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything after I brought it up. You know, I think one of my least favorite color combinations, if I'm allowed to say that, I don't love the green to the orange. Oh. You know, I'm kind of meh about that. Okay. Do you like it? No, it makes me think of the 70s. Okay. In a negative way. Because <laughs> normally the 70s are great. Yeah. You know, good times. I think, I don't know, I've only heard stuff. I wasn't alive then. Me either. Sorry for aging anyone. If they do remember the 70s, you look great. Do you know what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna paint this, the first third, the one where I said I'm only a third done, and then mm -hmm. we're just gonna end the tutorial. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got it from here, you, you got it. <laughs> that would be really funny. Uh, I mean, I know we did that timer thing that was pretty intense, but like now that I'm getting in my groove, I feel pretty chill. That's good. You know? Yeah. I'm just painting. I keep thinking of different ways you could design this yeah? painting. You could specifically, 
Well, one, you could make them all perfect scallop rainbow shapes with the useful dandy, handy dandy uh, container there. Uh -huh. And then you could say, okay, the first row is going to be warm, the third row is going to be warm, mm -hmm. the fifth row is going to be warm, and in between is random. Mm. Right? You can make implied lines on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And or then you could say, okay, look at it as columns and say row one, column two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the way up the page is warm colors. Mm. And everything mm. else is random. So you have one implied line all the way up the page. Yeah. That would be neat. So then you have a set. You're like, oh, I can always do this here. Knock those out real quick. Same colors, same colors. And then the rest are random. I think what's helpful, Kenan, these are great ideas. Thanks. And I'm just thinking back to when, like, you know when I do, like, loose floral paintings? Mm -hmm. We focus so much on composition on those. But, like, when you do exercises like this, and I, I get messages and questions, like, how do I know what colors look good with what? Like, I want to paint this floral. I understand about implied lines and all this stuff, but like, how do I know what colors are going to look good together? And like, you can use an exercise like this to inform you where it's just like, okay, I think that these two colors look really nice together or these, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can kind of section it out. You can take, you can crop it and be like, okay, that's really nice. That's or fun. maybe this one, because it got a little bit muddy in there, maybe I don't know if I want that. Like, or like you said, the colors you don't want in there anymore, the, the green to the orange. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, that just hit me where I'm like, hey, you, this could be a great way to test for florals. Another tip that I never actually follow, but I have faith that you guys are better than me, is if you have two glasses of water, you can use one cup for your cool colors and one cup for your warm colors, and that way you don't get this mm. mud. I've tried that, but I just get so excited that I end up rinsing whatever is closest and I don't pay attention to the warm and the cool. And we gotta have a name for that. The unexpected mud color for your water cup. Yeah. Well, cause I took one watercolor class in college a long time ago and I did not get it during that time. I got it I got it much later, but during that time I did not excel at watercolor. But he, what he taught was to just have a clean cup handy. He didn't teach the two like warm and cool. Oh. He had your dirty water and then you have your clean water. But the point of the clean water to have handy is like if you wanted to clean up a mistake or you accidentally put something there where you didn't, you wanna use clean water to clean up that or lift and so that way you always had that handy. That makes sense. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good idea. So you need three cups of water. <laughs> Warm, cool, clean. <laughs> now, if you guys ever visit our studio, you'll see why we just have jars, jars of water <laughs> just everywhere in all of the places. I wonder if I could paint over. Hmm. Hmm. Okay.
This is actually really nice. I kind of love that rainbows have come back in style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're everywhere. I needed some fresh blue. Oh, look at that turquoise color. Can you even believe? Can't even handle it. I can't get over that turquoise color. I love it so much. Let's do it again. Okay. I'm going to do it over here on this side. Okay, now I'm going to try and be a little bit more careful about when I lift my brush. Trying not to get the bleeds. Not because bleeds are bad, but because it's another little thing that you can practice and learn, brush control. could also be theater seating. Theater seating? Yeah, they're all stacked up. Oh, so you yeah, want okay. To, you know what, pull up a good Marvel flick. <laughs> what? What is it? Mar Marvel. <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> oh, I haven't. <laughs> do you like Marvel? I or? do, <laughs> yes. Unlike January, I like Marvel. Okay, so what you guys don't know is years ago. Okay. Keenan loves Marvel movies. <laughs> Years ago, Keenan <laughs> okay, loves okay. Marvel movies. I found out that Keenan loves Marvel movies, and he found out that I love Harry Potter. And he was just like, I only read the first, what, three books? Three or four, yeah. And I was just like, well, you're missing out. <laughs> it's great. And he told me I was missing out on all of the Marvel movies. Marvel Universe. Marvel Universe. Thank you. I'm not very familiar, to be honest. Yes. So we made a deal. And I said, Keenan, if you read all of the Harry Potter books. There's a lot of Harry Potter books. I will watch every movie in the Marvel Universe. How many Harry Potter books have you read since that time? So, he specified. Uh, <laughs> I have read. I have read. Do, do memes count? No. Nope. I've read some memes. No. Nope. Doesn't count. What about Harry Potter theories? <laughs> <laughs> so, all I'm saying, Keenan, is if you want me to understand all of your Marvel references, all you got to do is read Harry Potter. I have. Not read a single Harry Potter book. <laughs> I would have to start completely over also, to remember things. Also, what you don't know is when I said this, he goes, okay. <laughs> oh, like, challenge accepted. Not even going to be a challenge. I'm doing this today. Uh, it turns out they're really big books. Yeah. Oh, but I got that they do illustrated ones. Oh, those are pretty cool looking. Ah, and some of those are watercolor. Really? Yes, some of those paintings. I know and a watercolor artist. <laughs> What's watercolor? What's watercolor? <laughs> <laughs> and um, gosh, it's so fun to look through them. Some of the artwork in those is just unbelievable. I love illustration and mm, That's awesome. So good. I never would have known. Those are just thicker because of all the paintings, but gorgeous art that you can look at while you're... Hmm. Hmm. Do audiobooks count? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shoot. The audiobooks of them are so good, too. 
Just do that, Keenan. I mean, I was almost going to say I could do that today. <laughs> Listen, you don't have to listen. You know that I'm going to be giving good direction. You can tune out, put on some Harry Potter. Oh, you want me to do this right now? Yeah, I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> Headphones are in. Nobody's here. No <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. Harry Potter. Where'd my pink go? Ooh, my palette. My palette's getting pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of cool contrasting colors on there. Do you have a section that you just are drawn to? Curious. I, I get drawn to that bottom left uh, four section. Right here? The warms yeah. in a row? Yep. yep. Other than that? Nope. I like this section right here. Mm. Mm. I oh, like that the does have that good orange bleed the... to the blue. Yeah. I like that the warm and cool are playing against each other. I like that there's turquoise in there. I think I'm drawn to the warm because I'm cold. Oh, yeah, it's cold back here. It's cold back here. We're really, we really. It's actually really cold. Yeah, we have a really nice studio. <laughs> you all know. You've seen it. You've seen this. You all know me. <laughs> You can even do a continuous rainbow over and over. Do you know what I'm saying? No, it's fine. You, you just said you can even do a continuous rainbow all over. Yeah, like and you can I, start red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Oh, okay. Pink, You red, said that orange. earlier, but I... Did I? But I was looking at all of your continuous rainbows, <laughs> and I got confused. <laughs> You're like, that's why we're here. Yes. Uh, oh. That's oh, what you're painting the, right now. The rainbow scallops? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a great project, Sarah. <laughs> okay. I'm so close, you guys. I'm so close. Final fifth. Just kidding. Focus. I think that's a chapter in Harry Potter. Final fifth? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Let's do red. Boop. Last layer. And you can just paint over the tape too. Yeah, that's what the cool kids do. Yep. I've seen them do it. <laughs> Dang, I should have been like, how would you know? Yeah, that would have been a really good burn. <laughs> that would have been a good burn. And really mean. <laughs> What people don't know is I'm actually a bully. No, they do know I've been sending emails <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> when you edit these, you're like, she actually threw something right there. There's actually subliminal audio in every video, just me saying, help, help, help. You just get in front of the camera and blink your eyes a lot. Morse code. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one that I just mm -hmm. did. That, that was one's good. nice. That's a good one. These also look like those candies. Which ones? You know, the ones that like everyone's grandma has, like in a pumpkin bowl dish, and they're hard candies, not never wrapped. They're always just open hard candy. Have you seen those? Skittles? <laughs> No. 
know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't either. Open hard candies that aren't wrapped? Yeah, they're not wrapped. There's like a bag of hard candies that are circles and squares and weird things. Circles and squares yeah, they're and weird old things? candy. Kanan, if you, you have to research <sighs> this and say it because, I mean, I like candy and I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, that's, there's specific candy. <laughs> Don't forget to do the little tops, even though you can't see into the, you still got to do the little curves in there. These guys. So it's an actual continued pattern. Yeah, see, I, so I Googled hard candies that are old and I got the exact candies. What, what are they? Okay, one second, let me get you a good image. Okay. They're not shaped like this, I guess, but. <laughs> I have never seen those before in my life. You it's, guys? It's always in a, it's always in like a, a dish. Swipe a little to the right, maybe, or left. Okay, you have to send see? this. You have to send this picture to Chris so he I can will. edit it. I and will. So people can see it. I have never seen those candies before. They're unwrapped. <laughs> They're exactly what you described. Thank I just didn't know them. Thank you. Okay, you guys, we did it. We made it through. I hope you had fun. I hope you paid attention to the color palettes. I hope you played with mixing colors. I hope you looked at the implied lines, the composition, you worked on your brush stroke. But above all, I really hope that you took us up on our challenge to simply play and have fun. Keep that cup filled because if you go into painting thinking, I have to be so good at this right from the beginning, then you're just gonna feel kind of defeated because everything has a learning curve. And even once you like get up and you're like, oh, I'm doing so good, there's gonna be a wall that you hit where you're just like, oh, maybe not. And then, you know, like you have to fall in love with creating because that is what is going to push you through those hard times. You got to fall in love with the paint and playing and exploring and being okay with messing up, being okay with saying it's just a piece of paper and toss it because that is what is going to keep you going. And over time, over the long period of time, you will see an improvement. You will be able to find your own style. You will be able to paint the photo that you want to see or a gift for your grandchild. You know, like you can do all of those things. You just got to stick with it. And the way to stick with it is to fall in love with it and give yourself time to play. So I hope you played. I hope you laughed with us. I hope so too. I hope you tell Keenan to read all the Harry Potter books in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> And I appreciate you guys being here and painting with me. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can uh, join our watercolor group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art. We would love to see what you create with this. Maybe take some of the suggestions that we did. And if you need any of this stuff, you can find it at letsmakeart.com. So, Kanan, thanks for being here. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.